Welcome. It's been a while since I did any, any one of these videos. <laughs> uh, I've been busy in the shop the last two weeks uh, between rain and then just shop content doesn't make very good content. Not only that, got a few of the guys who don't really want to be on video. So anyhow, um, haven't been able to do much content. Haven't even been able to do many shorts. Um, but anyway, welcome to Neil's Farming and Gaming. And uh, we are planting Great Northern edible beans today. I planted a field yesterday, finished it up a little bit ago. We just started on a new field. Um, got a little bit of a shower on this field yesterday. So it's a little damp. But as you can see, <sighs> looky there. Isn't that, look at that. Look at nice moisture here. Look at that. Oh, I sure wish my corn was the first, first bunch of corn I had planted was like that. And look. We got a little baby smurf down there. See that thing? Blue. A couple of them there. And one of about two inches. Just a little deep, but this new to us planter is not exactly perfecto. And I went back in time. I wanted to trade in my 8370R or an 8420. Jack. And Typical 8420 style, the hood's all screwed up on it. And this is the second hood. <laughs> this tractor's got 9,100 hours on it, almost 9,200 hours. It's, uh, we bought it, I think Roger bought it, it had, uh, oh, what do we have on this? Like 2,000 hours, just under 2,000 hours when we got it, something like that. Um, this is the second time I've worked for this guy I worked for. Got married, went to the railroad for a while, then I came back. I like my farming. No, it don't pay as well. But that's side point. Um, but anyway, we we are trying 15 inch split row uh, uh, planting this year. So we got us a new to us split row planter. It's a 1780. You can see there, it uh, it is not. It's well used. And I think it's a 2000 model, something like that. But we only paid two grand, twenty thousand dollars for it. So here we are. You don't spend a lot of money on something you're trying necessarily, and find out you're not going to like it. Um, we think that we we went to direct cut on um, on our edible beans years ago, probably about ten years ago now, something like that. Um, the normal way that they do edible beans is like corn, 30 inch rows, and then they have a rotter and a windrower, or some of them just cut the beans and then they use a pickup head to pick them up to, to uh, combine them, or there is also a bean combine made by Picket Equipment. Um, I will hopefully get some footage of that stuff later this fall so you guys can see that. Um, but we went to a direct cut, which means we cut it with a flex head. We have a McDon, which now that I've been around some McDon stuff, I am not impressed. I do not like McDon swathers, and I do not particularly care for our McDon flex head. Light built junk. It has nothing to do with <laughs> with my my love of green. I don't necessarily think green makes the best flex heads either. But anyway, that that McDon we got, I don't like it. But anyway, here we are. We'll uh, pop one of these bad boys open. Three bushel buckets. And there you go. Look at all them Smurfs in there. These are Great Northerns, which are, when they're not dyed blue or red, whatever their seed coating is, are white. Um, they're an edible bean, of course, like I'd already said. An edible bean, beans means that after you get done... Harvest them and they go to the bean place. Um, what do we have? We have Trinidad Benham here for beans, and we have Kelly Bean, and we have New Alliance for our bean places we take our beans to. Uh, they raise edible beans in um, North Dakota. Uh, we raise more uh, Great Northerns here, and they raise more Pintos, but we also raise Pintos here. You can raise navies. Small reds, large reds. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever raised any lima beans here. Uh, I think that's more 
California. Uh, not sure. Uh, I know there's been some black eyed peas blade uh, raised some here and some black beans. So like, you know, black beans and rice. Um, northerns, uh, one of the main things uh, you make northerns with is like ham and bean soup or ham hocks and beans is one thing. Pintos, we all know pintos. I mean, they're in a lot of things, you know, refried beans, a lot of Mexican dishes, stuff like that. And we have two fields of those. I think we're going to have about 150, feet, 150 acres of northerns, 150 acres of pintos. I thought we were going to have 200 acres, but it's more like 300 acres, so I'm off a little. Shoot me. Eh. Anyhow, uh, it happens. But beautiful day here in western Nebraska. And I'm make out the over there between the pivot drops. You can see Chimney Rock from here major tourist attraction here um also was a oregon trail stop off is one of the things that they used to use as a guide for the oregon trail to see how new how, how far they were and a zimmy or a zimatic pivot this one's ours windshield wipes and then we got another little one over there I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got it moving. I planted under it already and got it moving so I can finish the planting on the other side of our little canal there, our service canal. But I've already made a few rounds, so we're going to go over to the Zimatic and we're going to start it moving so I can plant under it. you got to love this time of year. Always got them in the way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're good to have when you need the water, but when you don't need the water, they're kind of a pain in the butt. And even when you do need the water, they're an efficient way to plant to, to water. You know, um, uh, you know, like this one, we have drops on it, so we run a lower pressure system, and we just draw water out of the canal. And over there, you can't see it because it's around the bend. There's a pit that the water goes into from the canal. And uh, we pump out of the pit, pump it through the pivot point, pivot, and put it out here on the ground. And water our stuff. <laughs> anyway, we'll get this bad boy to moving. See, ain't that simple? The steam was a stupid rinky. You had to have about a rocket scientist course to figure the gall darn thing out. Rinkies are junk in my opinion. We like Zimatic and Valleys here. And I'm still not a fan of Valleys panels. Some of Valleys panels are pretty complex, the newer ones. But my method of madness is I make a few rounds like that and I start it moving out slow and then I just plan away from it. That way it won't get ahead of me. And then when I get so far, then I can get around behind here and make my last pass under the pivot. Now this pole type older style planter, that's only got half section uh, shutoffs. It's uh, I like the 1720 stack poles that I am used to, or our new 1725 that we didn't get a chance to use this year because we got it too late. Um, but uh, we we don't have the four rows that I can plant and stub in with on this deal. It's got two clutches on it, one on each transmission on the chain drive, so I can 
stub in a half a planter and that's it. Which I guess it works for now. But like I said, hopefully if we uh, like how the 15 inch thing works, um, we'll get a better one. That's kind of what I'm hoping. And from what I can tell so far, I like how it's planting. Um, of course, you're 15 inches, so it's smoother. You don't have as many valleys and peaks. That was some of our problems with the 30 inch. Um, we did drill for a while. And with minimum tillage, the drill we were using was not doing a very good job. We weren't doing a very good job of uh, keeping an accurate uh, population. Uh, the population we're planting this at is 90,000, which is 90,000 seeds per acre, roughly. Uh, chain drive, older, not going to be as accurate as the, the 1720 stack fold with hydraulic and pro shafts. Um, but still more accurate than our seed drill because you're only using cups and you're still using chain drive transmission, but you're using a cup to drop the seed. So you're not as accurate as you are with a seed plate and the seed plates here are similar to like the corn ones I showed you on the 1720. They're flat, they're flat. They're just two rows, uh, for, so you can get the population higher. Um, still use a vacuum to hold it against the seed plate. So similar in technology, just a little bit older. Um, but as far as that, it's more accurate on your seed depth and it's more accurate on your seed population. So that's part of the reason for this planter. Um, so what we really need to do next is roll, but we can't me and the boss's son can't get the boss convinced of that yet <laughs> and the purpose for rolling is not like giants seem to think you roll everything no stuff that you direct cut that you're going to have the header on the ground you want to roll like soybeans or edible beans when you direct cut so you know you can lightly roll this and all of your peaks would go away all of your root balls would go away. So you would have a, in rocks. We don't have too many rocks here. Some, not a lot. Um, but you push that into the ground so when you come back this fall and do your direct cut, you have a flatter, smoother surface and not as dirty of uh, a sample and not taking as much stuff into the combine and screwing up sickle sections in the head and the combine, you know, all that stuff. That's the reason for rolling. You don't roll everything like Giants makes you. Yes, I know everybody that's watching this going, what the hell are you talking about with Giants? I'm talking about Farm Simulator 22. Because <laughs> my channel is also part of that. Uh, real life farming, like I'm showing you right now, and virtual farming. To where if I wanted a 1720, I'd just buy it and farm with it. <laughs> Except for out here, you know, $200,000 for a planter, you don't just buy it. Um, so, as usual, uh, you know, we'll give another shot of the old girl here. <laughs> and I would probably do more videos from inside the cab of this thing, but it's not near as quiet and as nice as the 17 or night, the 8370R. Get that. Get it spit out. Kind of dirty. It's just, it's been used. You know, it's an older tractor. Um, so that's how it is. But nice to get a chance to, be, to video again. Nice day, hardly a breeze, so hopefully it wasn't too bad. And I've shown you in the Northerns, and when I get on to the Pintos, I'll go ahead and do another little bit of video of that. And uh, I was going to do the videos all week long and then put them together in a collage and I've got videos I just need to get them put together and released from corn planting <laughs> got to figure out how to get my information off my pro GoPro and uh, and we'll hopefully get into more of a uh, a normal normal policy or normalcy or whatever you want to call it <laughs> um, get these beans planted and then we start on first cutting the hay uh, alfalfa we got the alf we got the swather out and it's ready to go but the plant the 
balers we haven't gone through yet. And we were going to start cutting last Monday, but we've had rain in the forecast. And it hasn't it rained last night. And it was in the forecast for last night. And it's in the forecast for tonight. So how much hay do you put on the ground when you got a forecast of six days of rain again with only three day window of no rain and it rained last week of course so um you don't dare put too much on the ground if you're not sure you're gonna be able to bale it and we've been busy trying to get the bit of this planter for the for the beans ready that was a chore there was a lot to do and there's some stuff we didn't do to it we just put it in the field because we needed to get the beans in the ground uh, just like uh corn there's a insurance cutoff date which was 25th of may and I think today is the 9th of uh, June. And the cutoff day for beans is the 20th of June. So, and I'll get this field done today. And uh, hopefully I can be pretty close to being done by tomorrow night. It just all depends on what the weather, what the weather does for us. Thunder showers doesn't mean it's going to rain here, but. Um, we've had a lot of rain. We're up to what uh, 11 inches or something like that since it all started second week of May <laughs> and It's just been crazy, you know, uh, you know looking out there looking at those hills. I it's This is some of the greenest I have ever seen this area um, and I've lived here a long time We've had some nice green springs, but This spring just I don't know. It's just crazy But with that said I need to get to planting so that that pivot don't get ahead of me and uh, we will call this a video we'll catch everybody on the flip side and don't forget keep the rubber side down and one of the last look at that uh, chimney rock over there if you can make it out I can see it but a lot of people I won't anyway we'll catch everybody later